Welcome to True Projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project, a guided neural network approach to predict early readmission of diabetic patients. Introduction. The integration of artificial intelligence AI into healthcare is crucial for informed decision making and improved patient outcomes. This project focuses on using AI to predict the likelihood of diabetic patients being readmitted to hospitals, contributing significantly to healthcare efficiency. Hospital readmission rates are key metrics in evaluating healthcare quality, impacting costs and patient well-being. This project aims to reduce hospital readmissions by implementing advanced machine learning techniques with a focus on a novel variant of artificial neural networks that is ANN. Recognizing the importance of early identification, the project seeks to pinpoint patients at risk of readmission promptly. Hospital readmission refers to a patient returning to the hospital within a specified time after being discharged. Early detection allows timely intervention and preventive measures. The project acknowledges potential operational cost increases and underscores the need for accurate predictions to optimize resource allocation. And by leveraging machine learning in medical bioinformatics, the project highlights the effectiveness of models like ANN, support vector machine, and random forest. It acknowledges challenges tied to extensive datasets and proposes a guided gradient descent approach to improve the precision of predicting readmission for diabetic patients. And by focusing on diabetes mellitus type 2, a prevalent global health concern, the project recognizes the substantial impact of diabetes-related hospital admissions on mortality, morbidity, and economics. By minimizing readmission rates, the project contributes to global efforts to mitigate the burden of diabetes on healthcare systems and enhance long-term patient outcomes. Objective of the project So, as I mentioned earlier, the primary objective of the project is to develop and implement a robust machine learning framework leveraging advanced techniques including guided artificial neural networks, support vector machines, and random forest to predict readmission risks for diabetic patients. And we aim to investigate and compare the performance of different optimization algorithms within the ANN model, evaluating their effectiveness in enhancing predictive accuracy for diabetic readmissions in comparison to SVM and random forest models. And the objective also includes to train binary classification models and multi-class classification models to address both binary and multi-class aspects of diabetic patient readmission prediction. Requirements needed to execute this project are Software requirements Software needed is Anaconda Primary language used is Python Frontend framework used is Flask Backend framework used is Jupyter Notebook Database used is SQLite 3 and Frontend technologies used are HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap 4. Hardware requirements needed are Operating system of Windows Processor of i5 and above RAM of 8GB and above and hard disk of 25 GB and above. Now we'll discuss the working models of law of work. So the first step is important required packages. In this initial step, essential Python packages including NumPy, Pandas, SQLearn, and TensorFlow Keras are imported. These packages provide fundamental tools for data manipulation, machine learning, and neural network implementation. The second step is exploring the dataset. So this step involves exploring the diabetic readmission dataset. The dataset is examined to understand its structure and characteristics. Binary class conversion is performed, transforming the data to facilitate binary classification tasks. The third step is data processing. In this step, utilizing Pandas and Keras data frame streamlines data processing. Unnecessary columns are dropped to enhance dataset efficiency and prepare it for subsequent analysis and model training. The next step is visualization using Seaborn and Matplotlib. Here, Seaborn and Matplotlib are employed for data visualization, aiding in the exploration of patterns, trends, and relationships within the dataset. Visualization enhances the understanding of the data's underlying structure. The next step is label encoding using label encoder. In this step, categorical data is encoded into numerical form using label encoder. This step ensures that machine learning models can appropriately handle categorical features during training. The next step is feature selection. Here, feature selection techniques are applied to identify and retain the most relevant variables for model training. This process optimizes the model's performance by focusing on the most informative features. 
The next step is train and test split. In this step, the data set is split into training and testing sets to evaluate model performance. This separation is crucial for assessing how well the model generalizes to unseen data. And X and Y variables are defined for machine learning tasks. The next step is training and building the model. Here, machine learning models including SVM, random forest and a guided ANN with different optimization algorithms are trained for binary classification and multi-class classification. The objective is to provide a comprehensive assessment of predictive models for diabetic patient readmission. And in the next step, as an extension, hybrid models are introduced by combining predictions from multiple individual models. This approach aims to enhance predictive accuracy and robustness. And additionally, a Flask framework with SQLite integration is implemented, enabling user authentication and input. So after signing in, users provide feature values as input, which is then pre-processed and fed to train models for predictions. And the final outcome is displayed through the front end, allowing for user testing and interaction. Now we'll understand about the algorithms used. So the first algorithm built a support vector machine that is SVM. So SVM is a robust classification algorithm employed in the project for binary prediction and multi-class prediction of diabetic patient readmission. SVM works by identifying the hyperplane that maximally separates different classes in a high dimensional space, effectively handling complex relationships within the data set. By maximizing the margin between classes, SVM aims to achieve accurate predictions, making it a suitable choice for this healthcare application. The next algorithm built is Random Forest. So Random Forest, an ensemble learning method, is utilized for both binary and multi-class classification tasks in predicting diabetic patient readmissions. This algorithm constructs multiple decision trees during training and aggregates their outputs to improve accuracy. By mitigating overfitting through the combination of diverse trees, Random Forest enhances the reliability of predictions in the context of complex medical data. The next algorithm built is the Guided Artificial Neural Network that is ANN. So ANN implemented in the project represents a sophisticated variant of traditional ANN incorporating guided gradient descent for weight updates during training. This approach is deployed in both binary and multi-class prediction tasks for diabetic readmissions. Further enhancing its efficiency, the model is optimized using ADA Delta and RMS prop techniques. ADA Delta dynamically adjusts learning rates based on changing gradients, eliminating the need for manual hyperparameter tuning, while RMS prop addresses challenges like vanishing or exploding gradients by adapting learning rates differently for each parameter. This combined optimization strategy elevates the guided ANN's performance, fostering efficient convergence and accurate predictions in the context of diabetic patient readmission forecasting. Now we'll see the comparison graphs of the algorithms built for binary classification. So this is the horizontal bar graph comparing accuracies of different algorithms. In this graph on x-axis, I have accuracy scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So accuracy measures the overall correctness of predictions showing the percentage of correctly classified instances. This is precision scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have precision scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions, indicating how many predicted positives were actually correct. This is recall scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have recall scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So recall measures the ability to identify all relevant instances showing how many actual positives were correctly predicted. And this is F1 scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have F1 scores. And on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So F1 score combines precision and recall into a single metric, balancing accuracy and completeness in predictions. So the algorithm which is best performing in all the performance metrics will be used for predictions. Now we'll see the comparison graphs of the algorithms built for multi-class classification. So this is the accuracy scores comparison graph. This is precision scores comparison graph. This is recall scores comparison graph. And this is F1 scores comparison graph. Execution of the project. 
To execute this project first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files. So this is static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to frontend logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML pages. And this is diabetic data file which contains the diabetic readmission data set with class labels on which we will train the models. These are model files which contain algorithm information. These files will be loaded into the project code during runtime to utilize the trained models. And these are Jupyter source files for binary class classification and multi-class classification, which contains a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. Jupyter source file allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. And this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. So now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. I'm copying it. Open Anaconda prompt. So use the command cd followed by space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command is used to change the current directory to the code folders path. So now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py. I'm typing python space app.py and hit the enter button. So this command will execute the Python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address, local host and port unless configured differently. Now copy the local link provided by the framework. I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I prefer Chrome. After pasting it, hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. So here we can see a sign up link, click on it. So if you are new users, we have to register first. Fill in all these details and click on register button to sign up. And if we already have an account, we can directly log in by clicking on this link. So as I already have an account, I'm clicking on this link. So here we have to provide our credentials, username and password. and click on login button. So it has redirected us to the classification page. So we can execute the project as binary classification and multi-class classification. So here we can see a prediction link, click on it. So we can see binary and multi-class. So first we'll select binary. First we'll execute as binary classification. So here we have to fill in these parameters and click on predict button to get the classifications. So first we'll understand these parameters. So the first one is discharge disposition. So it shows where the patient went post hospitalization, home, a nursing facility or another healthcare setting. The next parameter is number in patient. So this indicates how many times the patient was admitted to the hospital in the year before their current stay, offering insights into recent healthcare use. Diag1, Diag2, Diag3, these variables represent the primary, secondary and additional diagnosis using ICD-9 codes, offering a detailed snapshot of the medical conditions addressed during the hospitalization. The next one is number diagnosis. So this number tells us how many different health issues the patient had during their hospital stay, giving a broad view of their medical conditions. The next one is Max Glue Serum. So Max Glue Serum shows the highest glucose level recorded in the hospital, helping doctors manage and understand the patient's blood sugar control. The next one is A1C result. So A1C result is the outcome of a test showing long-term blood sugar control in diabetes. It guides treatment decisions and affects overall health outcomes. And these parameters including repaglinide, nateglinide, chlorpropamide, glimpyride, acarbose, miglitol, and glipuride metformin 
represent various oral medications used in diabetes management, each serving a unique role in regulating blood sugar levels. And the last parameter is diabetes med. So it shows if the patient is taking diabetes medications, giving insights into how well they follow their treatment plan and how effective the diabetes management is. So now we'll fill in these parameters. So discharge disposition would be 1, number inpatient would be 0, diag 1 is 276, diag 2 is 328, diag 3 is 394, number diagnosis is 9, max glue serum is 2, A1C result is 3, repaglinide is 1, Nadglinide is 1, Chlorpropamide is 1, Glimpyride is 1, Ecarbose is 1, Miglitol is 1, Glyburide metformin would be 1 and Diabetes Met is 1. Now click on predict button. So here we can see the outcome that is the patient is not readmitted due to diabetes. So click on prediction link, click on binary. So we'll try again giving another set of parameters. So this time discharge disposition would be one. Number in patient is one. Diag one is 398. Diag two is 258. Diag three is 355. Number diagnosis is five. Max glue serum is 2, A1C result is 2, repaglinide is 1, nadglinide is 1, chlorpropamide is 1, glimpyride would be 1, ecarbose is 1, miglitol is 1, glyburide metformin is 1 and diabetes med is 1. Now click on predict. So here we can see the result that is the patient is readmitted in the hospital due to diabetes. Now we'll execute the multi-class classification. Click on prediction link. Click on multi-class link. So now we'll understand these features. So we have already discussed discharge disposition. So the next parameter is admission source. So it identifies the source from which the patient was admitted to the hospital, providing information on the origin of their current medical situation. The next one is number outpatient. So this number shows how many times the patient visited the doctor before coming to the hospital, giving insights into recent non-hospital medical interactions. The next one is number emergency. So it represents the number of emergency room visits the patient had prior to the current hospital stay, indicating the frequency and urgency of recent medical issues. And we already talked about these parameters when we were dealing with binary classification. This is rosiglitazone. So it is an oral medication used to treat type 2 diabetes by improving insulin sensitivity. So now we'll fill in these parameters. So discharge disposition would be 3. Admission source is 1, number outpatient is 0, number emergency is 0, number inpatient is 0, diag 1 would be 143, diag 2 is 316, diag 3 is 528, number diagnosis is 7, max glue serum would be 2, nate glenide would be 1, chlorpropamide would be 1, rosiglitazone would be 1, Ecarbose is 1, Miglitol is 1 and Glyburide Metformin would be 1. Now click on predict button. So here we can see the outcome that is the patient is readmitted in the hospital within 30 days of discharge due to diabetes. Click on prediction link. Click on multi-class link. So we'll try again giving another set of parameters. So I have filled in all these parameters. Now click on predict button. 
So here we can see the result that is the patient is readmitted in the hospital after 30 days of discharge due to diabetes. We'll try again. Click on prediction link. Click on multi-class link. So I have entered the parameters. Now click on predict button. So we can see the result that is the patient is not readmitted due to diabetes. Click on prediction link. Click on multi-class link. We'll try again. So I have entered the parameters. Now click on predict button. So here we can see the result that is the patient is readmitted in the hospital after 30 days of discharge due to diabetes. So similarly, we can give any set of parameters and can get the classifications for both binary classification and multi-class classification. Now click on sign out. So the conclusion here is the project successfully implements innovative predictive modeling techniques including support vector machines, random forest and a refined guided artificial neural network with EDA Delta and RMS prop optimization. This comprehensive approach contributes to accurate predictions of diabetic patient readmissions. Through meticulous data processing, feature selection and visualization, the project enhances the quality of the diabetic readmission dataset. This ensures that the models are trained on relevant information, improving the overall efficiency of the predictive system. And the project excels in both multi-class and binary classification tasks addressing the dual aspects of predicting diabetic readmissions. Models are tailored to handle the complexities of healthcare data, providing valuable insights for patient care and resource allocation. And as an extension, the project introduces hybrid models by combining predictions from multiple individual models. This integration enhances predictive accuracy and robustness, showcasing the potential for novel approaches in refining healthcare predictive systems. And the implementation of a Flask framework with SQLite integration establishes a user-friendly front-end for user testing and interaction. With features such as user authentication, input processing, and model predictions, the system ensures practical applicability and accessibility. The project concludes by demonstrating its significant contributions to advancing predictive analytics in healthcare, particularly in the context of diabetic patient readmissions. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.